Here we review deformity correction planning in the upper limb or for any long bone. In the deformity procedures module, if an upper limb long bone is chosen, such as the forearm or humerus, a different set of axis definers become available. For this case we choose the humerus, open both images and then scale in the usual way remembering to specify the laterality or the view of the image. Once both images are scaled, the planning screen is visible. Then there is a general axis definer with no specific joint angulations. Choose this for either image and choose to either define the joint line or the shaft axis in the proximal, middle or distal part of the bone. The 90 degree joint line angulation provided can be modified to suit. In this case, using the top of the joint line as a definer and on the lower part of the bone, the joint could be used but for demonstration moving to the shaft axis definer when this is used without a joint definer, the joint still needs to be defined. Move this blue target mark to define the end of the joint, which is needed later in the reduction phase. Move the rectangular box so the arrows are pointing in a proximal direction and position them each of the handles to outline the shaft and best define that segment of the bone. A cora is then created. If we right click on this automated cut and say open, it automatically defines the angulation and tells us the preoperative length. Place that cut in a more exact way, zoom into the area and place it on both edges of the deformity to be angled. Now we can move to the AP image, expand this and again choose your axis definers. In this case working with the joint lines in both segments. A slightly different situation as this is not an angular deformity but one of translation. So once the joint is correctly defined and the shaft axis could have also been used, the core of value is in effect at an infinite position as both bones are aligned. In order to make a cut in the appropriate place, right click anywhere on the yellow axis line and create cut, either open or closed without an angulation value. This is a manual cut defined by the M. Then place the markers at the point where the cut will be made depending on the deformity shown. Both images are now prepared and values are shown here on the left panel. Exact joints need to be defined if pre-op length is to be exactly the same. There is also a cut display panel. This can be viewed looking first at the LM view showing that there is an anterior angulation correction as if you were looking down the hand or looking at the AP view which at the moment because it has a manual cut shows an unknown translation and these two can be linked showing the overall angulation magnitude. No translation is shown. Closing this unless it's required, we now move to the reduce option. So for either image, starting here with the angular deformity, reduce the image. Identify the hinge point for the angulation by moving the purple circle and then use the handle distal to this point to actively see the rotation of the bone. 
So viewing both the report on the left and controlling the handle. If then a translation is required, this can be activated by moving the small handle distal to the hinge point. And the translation is also reported plus post-op length. The same happens in the AP view. Select that image and reduce. This time the cut line has been defined and no angulation is required, just a translation to the point where it is felt the best overlap is created and also slight lengthening is needed. At this point the procedure can be completed by save and commit or if a fixator is to be used, add new procedure, fracture management for plates or whichever other fixation device is needed and add that procedure. Nothing will be visible until the templating screen is selected. The reduced positions of the bones will be held and the plates will appear. Follow standard plate positioning methods. When happy with the procedure, save or commit to the PAC system. This ends the tutorial on upper limb deformity planning.